This is Brass Check, and we're reading from an article published by the King's College Newsletter, which is a college in London. And uh, the headline is, Teenage Psychotic Experience is More Common in Areas with High Air Pollution. And I'm just going to read it. You're unlikely to hear about this in the news. Research from King's College London provides the first evidence of an association between air pollution and psychotic experiences in adolescence. The study published by published in the uh, I guess Journal of American Medicine Psychiatry provides a potential explanation for why growing up in cities is a risk factor for psychosis. This is the first time researchers have linked detailed geographical air pollution data with a representative sample of young people across the UK. Psychotic experiences such as hearing voices and intense paranoia are less, extremes, are less extreme forms of symptoms experienced by individuals with a psychotic disorder like schizophrenia. While psychotic experiences are more common in adolescence than adulthood, young people who report psychotic experiences are more likely to go on to develop psychotic disorders as well as a range of other mental health problems and suicide attempts. The researchers found that psychotic experiences were more significantly were significantly more common among adolescents with the highest exposure to nitrox, nitro, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and very small particulate matter you know, pollution, even after accounting for known risk factors. Um, Nitrous, nitrogen oxide, excuse me, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen oxide together accounted for 60% of the association between living in an urban environment and having adolescent psychotic experiences. Um, so these are uh, forms of air pollution. Which they, they cleverly don't mention that they come from automobiles or, and trucks. That's a pretty good pretty good uh, sleight of hand there. Uh, they also mentioned that this is the first evidence of air pollution having an effect on mental health. I, I really doubt that that's true, but at least it's some, some work. Um, I can see an article that came in 2016. Uh, you don't even have to go that far. And it says a major new Study has linked air pollution to increased mental illnesses in children, even at low levels of pollution. This, but this article is three years ago, so this is it's just amazing how careless uh, journalists are. I mean, I'm not a full-time health researcher, and it took me 0.2 seconds to find out that the, this current article is not the first article or the first study. This was peer-reviewed. Review, peer uh, they examined 500,000 kids under 18 in Sweden. Maybe that's why we didn't hear about it, because it came from a, a civilized country. Uh, the problem, now, now this article is a little more um, honest. It goes right to it and says the results can mean that a lower concentration of air pollution, first and foremost, from traffic. So if you can deal with that air pollution that comes from car traffic, it may reduce psychiatric disorders in children and adolescents. I would be worried myself if I lived in an area with high air pollution. Um, the, uh, one of the professors in the study goes, this builds on existing evidence. In other words, this 2016 article is not even the first there was there have been study after study after study builds on existing evidence that children are particularly sensitive to poor air quality, probably because their lifestyles increase the dose of air pollution they are exposed to. That is, they are more active, and that developing organs may be more vulnerable until they fully mature. Uh, air pollution in the UK is above legal limits in many cities and estimated to cause 40,000 early deaths a year though this only includes illnesses such as lung disease, heart attacks, and strokes. So England, oh, what do they have? They have like 80 million people. I haven't looked at my almanac in a while, but uh, let's say it's 80. We've got uh, over 300 um, million. So let me do a little quick math, a little really sloppy math here. Um, 
All right, we've got three times, at least, let's say four times as many people as Great Britain. So we're getting uh, 160,000 early deaths a year. And these are gruesome deaths, by the way. You know, these are not, you know, die in bed with your, you know, with your family surrounding you at the end of a long life. I mean, these are deaths as a result of, of illnesses. And, there, and the article is good. I really appreciate the Guardian here because they say this estimate only includes lung disease, heart attacks, and strokes. It doesn't talk about any of the other diseases that, that air pollution can cause. Um, we did a video a while ago, too, that shows that... Um, your gas range in your house uh, may be producing even more pollution than being out on a busy urban street. So uh, make sure when you're using, make sure you have someone come by every now and then, check that stove, make sure all the parts are working, all the tubes are in good shape. Uh, the, the flame should be burning blue. If it's burning any other color, that's a problem. Uh, keep your windows open when you're cooking. And if you have a vent, use it. And if you don't have a vent, you might want to look into getting one because the air pollution levels, you'll have to, you'll have to search uh, our, our, the site to find the, uh, the video. But it's a significant, like many hundred percent increase when, once you turn those, um, those gas flames on. Uh, and this happens at low levels, by the way. One striking aspect of the new research is that Sweden has low levels of air pollution, but the research is still saw the link even below levels of 15, um, I don't know what MCG is, per M3. Anyway, so it's small, whatever, we know that. Sweden is not a country that suffers from a very bad air quality. Uh, this suggests that other countries and cities have an either bigger challenge as they will have to make significant improvements to their air quality so that it is even cleaner than Sweden's. I mean, it's interesting that the study had to be done in Sweden by an English, by a UK uh, university. No one was interested in the UK. Apparently, the new the new study somebody did get interested three years later. Uh, is anybody doing these studies in the United States? Anyway, uh, what's the answer here? I I really don't know um, if uh, you know if your kids are having trouble or your grandkids or your nephews and nieces and they live in a big city uh, that should be one of the things looked into um, everything should be done to get them out of the city as often as possible uh, into parks where the air is somewhat scrubbed by trees though not much um, and on vacations instead of them putting on you know putting them on a plane and taking them to some ludicrous Disneyland place um, you know find a place probably you won't even have to drive that far even in new york city if you drive 50 miles you can be in deep woods you can see bear uh, get them in a car take them to uh to the mountains and you know let them walk around and breathe some fresh air occasionally uh you know that's something that you could afford to do every weekend instead of waiting um once a year uh to take them to uh <laughs> to the the horror known as disney world uh, anyway, so that's that's the story. Uh, another impact on our health that we're really not hearing about. This uh, is good to know about because there are things that you can do. And if you have a, a choice and a chance to pick where you live, um, picking a non-city place is obviously superior. All of the things being equal to picking a city place, especially for children who are most vulnerable.